This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Flashback! Flashback! Oh man. Okay, yeah, this is just, this is becoming like the Sachi route. Alright, well that part of the Sachi route was the best part by far, so, oh, I'm excited now. There's another me inside me. I'm not playing with words or anything. It really is a completely different person. My body doesn't belong to me alone. That really scares me, but it's thanks to her that I'm even alive today. She knows everything about me, but I know nothing about her. How does that work? In that case, which of us has the better claim to be the real me? The one that was there first? Sad music. I was born into a relatively wealthy family. My parents valued me highly, all the more so because I was their only child. They provided me with an excellent education, hoping to raise me into a worthy daughter. One they could show off with pride. Oh, well, I mean, it's good that they they value you and that you, they gave you a good education, but uh, I hope I hope it's not just because they wanted to show her off and it was because they actually care about her. But, well, we'll see. Although I was still a child. No, maybe it's because I was still a child. They brought countless tutors to our home to pack knowledge into my head, like travelers stuffing all their luggage into one tiny overburdened suitcase. Oh, this poor girl. The tutors were all excellent in their fields, and they all charged heavily for their lessons. After studying with them, even the most uncooperative and dim-witted of children could be safely sent off into the world. But I guess I was sort of a special case. It took a lot of time and trouble for me to learn the simplest things. When shown a perfectly clear example, then told, now do, now you try, please. I couldn't even imitate my tutors properly. She's probably just not an academic. But, okay, it sounds like this is, she was like this even before getting the separate personality. So maybe, maybe she has a learning disorder of some kind. Or maybe she just doesn't pick up on things as quickly as maybe the average. I understood what I needed to do. But when I tried to put that knowledge into practice, my voice would quake and my throat would go dry. Even though I wasn't being friend in any way, tears would come up to my eyes. Piano and violin, arithmetic and the English alphabet, it was all the same, no matter what the subject. When I hesitated, my tutors would say, you didn't understand? I'll do it one more time, and then repeat the example faster than before. And then they would glare at me with eyes that said, get it right already. That really, really scared me. My body would freeze up entirely. My clothes would grow damp with sweat. By the time my molars began to chatter against each other, I could no longer muster the strength to even try. The tutor would scowl down at me, looking ready to burst into angry shouting at any moment. That's not good. The heavier their gazes weighed on me, the less I could move or think. Time crawled past in empty silence. In the end, the tutor would simply sigh in exasperation and leave the room. It wasn't uncommon for my lessons to end with nothing more than that. Dejected and humiliated, I could only reflect on my own uselessness. And as I stood in my quiet room, stock still and alone, eventually I would hear an angry voice from outside. Oh, that's not good. Again and again, violent words rattled against my window pane like fat drops of icy rain. I would cover my ears and wait for the storm to pass. It tended to go on for quite some time. When the shouting finally ended and silence returned, my father would come to my room and push open the door. Oh, this poor girl. <laughs> She's having all these expectations put on her. This is not gonna go well. My dad was nice to me. It was hard to believe he was the same person who'd been shouting at the teacher just a few minutes ago. When he held me against his broad, powerful chest, I smelled cigarettes and women's perfume. Never the same brand twice. It was comfortable, but also a little scary. <laughs> what is... Nope, I won't, I won't say it. <laughs> I, I, my, the gears are turning in my head. I'm like, oh, is he, uh... Sleeping around, maybe? Hope not. Hope not. I've got to do better next time. I can't let Daddy and Mommy down. That night, I knelt by the window, joined my small hands together, and prayed to the stars. Oh no, is this going to turn into the Kotomi route, which made me cry? <laughs> 
The next day was my regular mu music lesson. I sat perched quietly in front of a piano that had, shipped, that had been shipped overseas from Hamburg, waiting for the teacher to arrive. In that moment, if somebody had snuck up and hit the keyboard, I might have tumbled right off the bench. My anxiety and fear must have shown on my face. When my tutor finally arrived, she closed the door carefully behind her and immediately came to my side. Wow! I don't know what's worse. The fact that she just said that or the fact that she was singing that in that cutesy little sing-song voice. Oh, I want to punch that tutor. She spoke in a very gentle voice, so for a moment the sentence didn't really register. But all too soon I realized that she had spoken awful, terrifying words. Ooh, wow! Oh, this is gonna be hard to get through. I'm, 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 this is gonna be one of those fictional characters that I just really want to reach through the screen and punch, isn't it? Can we punch her? <laughs> Can we do worse? The tutor struck me with a thin, stiff rod. The staining pain of the blow lingered like a nasty paper cut. Oh, things are getting real dark now. Oh, I knew that wasn't gonna end well. あなたのせいで私が落とすまに無能だと言われてるのに。あなたが全部悪いんでしょ。あなたのせきにんなのよ。はい。私は落ちこぼれでバカのダメな人間です。Oh, this. I didn't want to say it. Good. Don't. Even a child could understand how cruel those words were. But I was so terrified of being struck again that I squeezed them out anyway. <笑>そう。先生が指導したところ <laughs> Guys, I think we may have just found the worst character in the game. Which is which is a really tough competition, by the way. <laughs> I don't think she could have been serious, but my entire body shrunk in fear. I was so terrified that I couldn't answer. And since I didn't respond, she hit me again. <laughs> What kind of a person would have to do that to a young child to feel better about themselves? A real scumbag. That's what. From that day on, violence became known as discipline. No wonder she has such cripplingly bad self-worth in the present. I had numerous tutors, but after that day, it wasn't long before every one of them began to discipline me in the same way. What the fuck is- do they have a group text going? Wow! That female tutor might have told the others that I wouldn't tattle to my parents no matter what they did to me. Oh, oh wow, yep. Yeah. Female tutor is worst character in the whole game. I hope we find her in the present and, and teach her a lesson. Their discipline grew more refined with time, developing into a kind of art. They found ways to cause me pain without leaving telltale marks behind. Skillfully and thoroughly, they broke me in mind and body. It became impossible for me to look people in the eyes when I spoke. I was never good at ho holding lengthy conversations, but my responses grew shorter with every passing day. By the end, I was barely speaking at all. Even then, my suffering might have been slightly meaningful if those Spartan lessons had produced results. But no matter how hard I tried to please my tormentors, it never improved my evaluations. My father dismissed the tutors in ones and twos over my terrible results, until none remained. They cursed me to my face before they went. Some even spat onto the floor of my room before stalking out. What kind of... These people are absolute dicks. Yes. So... 
まあ、勉強や習い事なんてできなくていいさ。健康に育ってくれる。それだけでパパは満足だぞ。ああ。I hope he really means that. Because Mishru does need at least one person in her life <laughs> to support her. Preferably two, her mom and dad, but we haven't really heard from her mom. But I was unable to fulfill even that modest hope. On my walks around the garden, I would sometimes find myself painfully short of breath, clutching my frothing chest. My parents grew concerned. Eventually, they brought me to a big hospital for an examination. And there, I was diagnosed with a serious heart disease. The doctor's verdict? Continuing to lead a normal life outside of the hospital would necessitate significant restrictions on my activities. From now on, I'd have to refrain from vigorous exercise. Oh, great! And Yuji took her on marath marathon runs when they were fake dating. Oh, that's, that's definitely not going to come back to bite us later. Uh oh. I couldn't study or play the piano. I was never much of an athlete. Even talking with people was a struggle. And now I'd become an invalid who couldn't even live a normal life. As I watched my parents' faces fill with disappointment, a thought occurred to me. Oh, look at that. My tutors were right all along. No, they weren't! They sucked, and you should forget about them. They told me I was a stupid, useless person who didn't even deserve to live, and they weren't wrong. They were! They were! <laughs> They must have said it hundreds of times. Why didn't I figure this out earlier? Of course they beat me. It's only natural to treat garbage like garbage. This is really hard to read. Thinking that way made me feel a little better. I was stupid to even try to answer my parents' expectations. I wasn't cut out for that from the start. The thought freed me from my burdens. It also wiped away the meaning of my existence. Soon my parents had lost all hope in me, and devoted their nights to producing a new child. Their previous frequent visits to my room grew rare, and the time I spent alone increased. Oh my g. <laughs> How bad can this girl's life get? Good lord. Also, I, I was wondering, yeah, I was wondering if her parents actually did care about her, and from the sound of things, it sounds like. Oh, this, is, this is not good. This is not good at all. My room was always cold. I kept the curtains shut throughout the day. Little by little, I felt myself slipping away from the world outside. Nothing I did turned out right. But of course it didn't. I was defective from the start. Clumsy and awkward as I was, I soon found the one and only thing I was good at. Letting time roll past in empty, uneventful silence. I would sit quietly in the corner of my room, not budging a millimeter all day, simply drawing breath. That alone became something of a speciality of mine. Even a mollusk at the bottom of the sea probably couldn't beat me at staying still. That was all I had left to be proud of. I continued to live like a clam, but biologically speaking, I was a human being. My body grew larger little by little, and in time I stopped being a child. I was no longer allowed to shut myself up in my room doing nothing. I had to go to a place called school. The little mermaid who lived at the bottom of the sea couldn't speak the human tongue very well. By the same token, I couldn't really communicate with the other students. It didn't help that I was a clam, not a beautiful princess. Everyone around me could live a normal life. I envied them from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't study or make friends. Moving around a little would get my heart screaming with pain. Just keeping myself breathing was about all I could manage. At first, a number of my classmates made an effort to draw me out of my solitude. Well, that's nice of them. But I didn't know what to say to them. Most of the time, I just nodded my head and mumbled, yeah, with a stiff expression on my face. Inevitably, the people who approached me gradually gave up, and eventually the class came to operate as if I wasn't there. Oh, that's sad. At least her classmates are, seemed nice. That was kind of a relief in a way. Nobody expected anything from me, so I couldn't disappoint anyone. I, it was as though I was made of air. Even in school, I could return to my life as a clam. I thought that was just fine. Not bad at all. My parents made sure I went to school regularly, probably thinking I'd at least have to communicate with other people there. But it wasn't rare for me to go an entire day without speaking a single word. Even when the teacher took attendance, they'd just glance in my direction, not bothering to call my name. As my free time increased, I began to think pretty regularly about the point of my own existence, or rather the pointlessness. Why was I going to school? Why was I even alive? I considered those questions at some length. I mean, I feel like pretty much most of us question those at some time, especially come high school. 
Watching from afar as my classmates laughed together and chatted enthusiastically about television, sometimes I would have to fight down the urge to burst into tears. They were so close, but I was separated from them by an insurmountable wall. Even a trash can is useful to others. I was just taking up space. Why was I born in the first place? My parents had given me a cell phone, saying I'd probably need it as a student. There wasn't a single message or call recorded in the history log. The memory was clean, pure white. That phone must have been lighter than anyone else's. It was empty inside. Unless I kept a firm grip on it, it'd probably float up into the air, get pecked at by some, some passing bird, and then disappear with a pop. Ah, I want to die. In the end, that was my only conclusion. This is real sad. A year passed in that school, then two. And that was my only constant rock of truth. On the deserted rooftop of the school building, looking up into the blue sky that stretched out over the road to school, I longed for death. I simply didn't understand the point of continuing to breathe. Living every day as a non-entity is something like walking on an icy road in bare feet. At first it's scary, but soon enough your nerves are paralyzed. You feel nothing at all. A good while later, when you realize this might be pretty bad, it's already far too late. There's nowhere to go from there. There's nothing to be done. You live every day of your life frozen to the ground, choking on bitter cold air. Might as well just die then. With that thought in mind, I began to head up to the roof during every recess period. Up there, the only thing separating this world from the next was a waist-high steel fence. Do all Japanese schools have that waist-high fence? Kind of a rhetorical question, I'm saying out loud. I always see that, though. And, yeesh. Someday I'll cross over that fence and become free. Someday I'll escape into nothingness. Comforted by those thoughts, I waited patiently for the right timing. I waited for someone, God or whoever else, to send a sign just for me. I wrap my arms around my knees and sit, telling myself that maybe today would be the day. Maybe today, the clouds would part for a ray of light, and a voice from above would say, Come, it's time. I would stare closely at the trains barreling past the station, wondering if the sign might flash past in the window of a carriage. But instead, I sat by myself on that roof. No matter how long and patiently I waited, I never saw any signals. Nobody whispered the words in my ear. In the end, I was all alone, just like I was everywhere else. Every place was the same to me. I was, in, it was, I was in the corner of the room where I had been beaten terribly. I was deep at the bottom of the sea where no light could reach me. I was at the end of the world, surrounded on all sides by silent walls of stone. God must have been busy with something else. Otherwise, why wouldn't he fly over and speak the words? Because if you see his face, you die. That's why. One day when I went to the rooftop as usual, I found a girl who had just in that very moment crossed over the fence. She was standing boldly at the edge of the building, staring straight ahead. Oh no, another person is trying to kill themselves. And when I saw her, one powerful thought filled my mind. That's not fair. After all my anguished internal debating, all my suffering, all my waiting, I couldn't get myself over that fence. Why did this girl get to make it look so easy? That girl was going to kill herself. She was going to leap off the roof fall into the concrete below and end her life. It was obvious enough from the way she stood there, straddling the border between the roof and the sky, arms outstretched like wings to catch the wind. Seemed almost to be enjoying herself. It wasn't the sort of pose you could make if you cared about your own life. Anyway, it wasn't fair. Why did she get to die when I had to live? I didn't have the first idea who she was, but it just wasn't fair. <laughs> Oh, that's all... Oh, I thought she was going to say more. I was trying to shout as loudly as I could, but what came out of my mouth was a weak, spiritless sound, like the rasping of a broken-down old accordion. That's how loud she could talk back then? She's one of the loudest characters in the game. It probably didn't help that I was, wasn't used to conversation, but my voice just wasn't coming out right. The girl quietly stared down at the ground far below, not even noticing my presence behind her. She seemed to be looking for the exact moment to jump. Maybe God had already given her the signal. Hey. 
ダメなの I call that again and again, but she didn't seem to hear. Maybe I no longer even existed in this world. Maybe I'd slipped into some alternate plane of existence long ago and was just peeking into this world through an interdimensional one way mirror. She ignored me so completely that it seemed possible. I called out to her, my voice choked with tears, but even then she didn't turn around. The girl's body went into spasms of shock. She looked like a wild animal with its fur standing on end. Um, you were planning on falling off voluntarily. I don't know why you're freaking out about that. And then, at long last, she timidly turned around to face me. My tear stained face must have been a real sight. The girl lifted herself over the fence and returned to this side. She was wearing the same uniform as me. Unsurprisingly, she was clearly from my school. Oh! New character! Huh. Interesting. Do we ever learn her name? I want to. She has a sprite, so she must be important. She handed me her handkerchief, and I dried my tears. Nothing like that had ever happened to me before. It was embarrassing. But it made me sort of happy. I didn't really know what to do next. That was kind of a hard question, actually. I just didn't want her to die. And it's not like I was about to lecture her on treasuring her life or anything. I was just scared by the thought of someone escaping this world while I was still hesitating on the edge. <laughs> the girl watched me as if observing some rare species of animal. I didn't have the first idea where to begin or how to explain myself, so after thinking it over for quite some time, I chose the simplest option. So that's the kind of a derpy face that she has right there. <laughs> Screwed up after all, huh? Guess I can't even manage a normal conversation anymore. The thought made me genuinely sad. I couldn't find my usual numb indifference. It felt like a harsh reminder that I didn't belong in this world any longer. Aw. Well, at least we can get, make her happy. Oh, that's nice. Watching as I slumped my shoulders dejectedly, the girl burst into laughter, and although I didn't have any real evidence either way, I didn't feel like she was mocking me. It, I, it was relieved, happy laughter. The sort of laughter I hadn't heard in a long time. <laughs> I wasn't sure what to do, so I just stood there quietly as she laughed and laughed. But no matter how patiently I waited, she just wouldn't stop. Much the opposite. After a while, she threw herself down on the ground and began to roll around, her roars of amusement even louder than before. <laughs> I just realized... Take a, take a look at girl's left arm. That bracelet look familiar? That's the one that Mitru is wearing in the present on her left arm. Hmm. I don't like this. Something tells me that girl isn't going to be around for very long. <laughs> Watching her rolling around like that started to get me in a kind of silly mood myself. 
The moment I noticed a little giggle slipping out of my mouth, the dam seemed to break. I began laughing so loudly I surprised myself. <laughs> Aw, well that's cute. That's nice. The two of us laughed for a very, very long time. Long enough that the color of the sky changed above us. Long enough that I could, I'd almost believe that whole seasons had passed by. When her laughter finally came to an end, the girl rose shakily to her feet. Both hands clutching her belly. She opened her mouth to speak, but at first could only manage a few high-pitched little giggles. Aww. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's a nice smile. She's cute. So that was it after all. The girl had been planning to die. I knew that much from the start, but when she came out and said it so bluntly, I was still slightly taken aback. Glad I could help. <laughs> she owes me a life debt. <laughs> I didn't deserve to be thanked by anyone. Why was she saying this to me? Do we ever get to see me true? Like, back from these days? The girl wrapped a hand around my neck and drew me close. After briefly petting my head, she hugged me tightly against her. <laughs> Normal is overrated. Normal can be boring. Although, you can go too far on the weird scale and become off-putting. Her chest had a sweet, milky odor. I'd never smelled an Evergirl's body like this before. I didn't know what to do. About anything, really. It was all too much. My mind just couldn't keep up. Yep. Yep, they're gonna become best friends, and then something bad's gonna happen to girl. And then Michiru is gonna be like, I can't have a best friend again. And that's why she freaks out any time they mention best friends. Already theory crafting. Am I going to learn your name? Because I feel bad calling you just girl all the time. I'd convinced myself there was no place for me in this world, but when I felt the life pulsing in her chest, I found myself able to breathe easily again. She smelled sweet, and her body was soft and warm. I couldn't remember the last time I'd been so close to another person. Contact with other people had always seemed so scary. And it was re really was scary, to be honest. But at the same time, how can I put this? More than anything else, it felt like someone was gently tickling my heart. Hugs are nice. I returned home that day feeling as if I'd been reborn. Probably because of my unusually cheerful expression, my parents struck up a conversation with me for the first time in a while. I wasn't able to explain very well, but I did tell them I'd gotten to know somebody at school. I didn't say I made a friend, let alone a best friend. After all, there was still a chance it had all been a delusion on my part. Maybe tomorrow everything would be right back to the way it was. That would be way too sad though, right? Better not to get my hopes up. My parents said, I see. Good for you. Mixed emotions on their faces. Not that it bothered me much. That night, I ate my dinner slightly earlier than usual and slipped into bed slightly before my normal time. For once, I actually wanted tomorrow to arrive a little faster. <laughs> 